this meeting is to tell every one of us here a big congratulations because we've successfully ace passed destroyed every obstacle that came our way for the past two months and we are done with our one month probation so congratulations to each and every one of you and here's a video to tell you congratulations congratulations for completing your probation period i really mean it alex will not tell you any huge throw a big party to tell you congratulations but throw that party for yourself and appreciate how far you've come it's two months of hard work already and now from here there's nothing limiting you from becoming the best version of yourself congratulations once again you know why you should be happy is because of how far you've come you've come really 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 far just how far now let's take a moment to reflect on how far we've come two months ago when i created core 10 group so that first week immediately you got the email asking you to come to slack and a lot of people started posting hi i'm from hi i'm so so and so from nigeria hi i'm so so and so from cameroon hi i'm so so and so you know just hi 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 greet everybody so we're very overwhelmed by the platform it's their first time of using slack so <laughs> everywhere was looking very confused so you saw a whatsapp group and you probably you clicked on the link and you joined and that whatsapp group was created by someone called bright from the wave and that's probably how it gets i remember that first week some people were even asking questions on how to use the intranet <laughs> like i cannot see anything in my intranet my intranet is just telling me all you've done all we need probably um onboarding start on monday like how how i was getting a lot of questions slowly but surely that face passed away and then you entered into the two weeks onboarding where all the projects were just open and everything was looking ziggy ah it was looking so weird and that would 
passed and then we got into the one month probation proper so what have we done for the past one month now we've done a lot the first thing we did was shell if you still remember so i'm sure the first time you heard the command pwd what's the write a script to print the absolute working part of a directory so people were like how now how, how? these people should not come and kill us <laughs> remember that time now i'm sure if somebody tells you to write a script to print the absolute working part of a directory you just smile and say pwd is the script <laughs> that's how far you've come now you understand shell when you get things like ls cd mkdi arrow hey problem but now let's just our child's play every day you use torch you use echo you use clear ls arrow m arrow m space dash arrow you just go on and again and again now you're familiar with the shell First time some people opened the sandbox, they were like, what's this black environment I'm seeing? Is this, is this how I could? What's this? Some people wanted to change their operating system from Windows and Mac to Linux. <laughs> that was one month ago. Now, I'm not sure anybody here would still be asking. Please, what software do I need to download to run ALX? Should I download Linux for my computer? And nah, I'm not sure anybody will still ask that. That's how far you've come. So you've understood Shell. Now you understand that in your Windows machine, you can do something called an SSH and connect yourself to the sandbox online. Great. So that time when you hear someone talking about SSH, it do not look strange. You already know that, okay, I'm doing it. It's a process where I can connect to some server. That's something you've learned. Kudos. And all the shell commands, shell permissions, navigation, redirection. Remember when we did shell arithmetic and expansions and everything was looking ziggy. Now I'm sure at least if I take you back to some of those stats, you can do it so simply. So that's a good one. We moved over to Emax and Emax gave a lot of people problem. Even till now, I believe that Emax, hmm, 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 you should fear Emax. <laughs> but that's me, sure. I'm team VI, I'm not team Emax. So now if I open Emax, do you still remember what the command F10 does? Try and remember that's important oh well not so important <laughs> now at that first the first time when you were doing the project emax looked like a very big deal and i remember telling some people choose one between emax and vi and just focus on it don't steal yourself and they were like you won't understand my scores are zero this 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 that now those things don't look ziggy again you're used to them we did vi and almost everybody here is having fun with vi these days you will know how to delete a swap file and the rest that's how far you've come then we move over to git do you remember when you were calling git jit <laughs> remember when we were calling git jit so i'm having problems with jit <laughs> and i'll be like uh, there's nothing like git though it's called git <laughs> and then github git is command line and then github <sighs> it's, everything looked so 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 confusing but now is it that confusing no some people used to forget the steps git add git commit git push they would just do git commit and then type git push and it's no work then they will screenshot a very long message for me and send it's not working <laughs> remember those days that was that time in just one month look at all the things you've been able to know and someone is telling me not to tell you congratulations no now or wrong <laughs> so congratulations once again
apart from gates you've gone ahead and started C your first programming language in ALX and you know ALX do hard things and so C looks confusing from start to finish and yes remember I I've said it several times that C is supposed to confuse you if it's not confusing you then something is wrong somewhere it said that it's you that is confusing C or you are not doing C at all because C mm -hmm. is supposed to confuse you and that's how far you've come now you understand that C could be complex but you've started moving forward at least everybody here can print hello world on their screen you know how to include a header file you know how to write a function prototype in your header file you know what main.h does that if you create your own function prototype and you don't include the main.h your code won't run you know that great that's how far you've come so you've done a lot within this one month and two weeks so congratulations once again for all the times that you had serious issues with git especially G when i saw people call it git git see what i was doing here this is what i was doing anytime i saw somebody call git git this was how i felt <laughs> yes that's how i used to laugh and roll on the ground but i of course i wouldn't tell the person you know, if the person say oh you are laughing at me abby <laughs> i was just laughing at how far i myself have come from the first time i heard about git so now that i can pretty much do almost all the basic things in git so congratulations to you all once again you deserve every bit of applause and at this point you've come very far so now you finish your one month's probation and life is supposed to be easy from here <laughs> but is that really the case this brings us to the next question what's next now what's next in your software engineering journey i didn't put this as what's next in alx because alx is only a platform to help you in your software engineering journey alx ALX do not take control of your life. They don't have a control of your future. Your software engineering career is not in the hands of ALX. It is in your hands. And so this question is very important. What's next? I, I went to a stage where I told myself, say, tutorial never tire you. Like, I was learning and learning and learning and no more tutorial never tire you you sit down you watch an eight hour tutorial you copy everything that's there and you just see one question that's not in the video wow my brain will just leave me from the house and go to the market and tell me when you are done come and meet me there we are practicing social distancing that was how i felt anytime i encounter the a tough question it's just as if my brain will wear face marks and give me gap and say hey physical distancing so i have to ask myself what's next do i continue like this and it's a big question you have to ask yourself what's next so that in the next 12 13 months from now next year november next year december this time next year you should be proud of what you've achieved 
So that's why this question is important. And it brings me to the ultimate goal of you in your software engineering journey. Remember I asked what's next in your software engineering journey and then my next slide talks about your goal. The goal is written in capital letters there. That's that's not a mistake though. Yes, that's deliberate. What is the goal? The goal of me of you the goal for you the goal you should set now if you've not set it already you can see what is written in capital goal is the first word better is the second word and yesterday these are the keywords so the goal is to be better than you were yesterday any other thing is not the goal and if you're better than how you were yesterday that is the goal so imagine you were one percent better like you try to be one percent better than yourself each day so the way you are today tomorrow you just try to be one percent better in a month you will be 30 or 31 percent better than you were previously in three months you'll be 90 percent better than you are now and in four months you would be more than 100 percent better you'll be 120 or around that figure better than you are now in four months if you try to be better than yourself every day in four months you would be more than 100 percent better than you are now so you see the goal that is just try to be one percent better than each day you do it consistently in four months you are going to be more than 100 percent better so look at how better you are now how good you are now if you try to be one percent better every day from now on in the next four months you would be more than 100 percent better than you are now that's a very 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 good accomplishment so set this as your goal to be better than yesterday now it's easier said than done uh, the goal is to be better all this motivational talk but no i'm not here to give you some kind of weird motivational speech i'm going to tell you how to do it and everything i tell you here are the same thing i try to apply and so the next set of do and don'ts that I've written out here are things that have helped me to be 1% better than myself each day. So let's start with the, the do's. What you should do if you want to be better than yesterday each day. Now I want you to pay careful attention to this. If possible, you can start screen recording. You can start... Um... um screenshotting this this slides you know so that you can always go through it again and again of course i'll post this on youtube but just take this serious so what should you do number one you should study hard this is very easy to see but it's pretty much difficult to do because studying hard requires discipline so this evening let me give you a short story this evening when i was preparing these slides i went on facebook to check the engagement on my latest posts the difference between coding programming software engineering i just talked generally about coding and then i said in my next post i'm going to talk about computer science and how computer science concerns coding and programming so I went to check the engagement and then I just saw in my Facebook wall that surprisingly from nowhere that TikTok is down. I was like, how? TikTok is down. 
the way what service to go down so i quickly went to tiktok to check if tiktok is down and i spent like 15 minutes checking if tiktok is down so tiktok was apparently not down <laughs> and i lost that self-control to leave immediately and i continued to watch videos and videos and videos until i had to remind myself that come something took you to the internet in the first place so imagine you're studying I just see one of those groups just drop one message, my one funny message, you know now. You just decide to interact. Hey guy, how far what's up? You could spend the next three hours on the internet so without studying. But if you want to get better at software engineering, you have to study hard. If you know you're on this table like me, that find it very difficult to study hard because of discipline. You can send a message to say yes so that I know I'm not alone here because I have a big problem with discipline in studying hard. But if you want to get better than yourself, please study hard. Did I say study hard? <laughs> I meant study hard. <laughs> yes. So, how do you study hard? Brings me to the next point. Learn programming. I said study hard and then I said learn programming. So study hard requires discipline. More of your soft, should I say soft skills rather than the technical studying. That's what studying hard means. Your ability to concentrate, to discipline yourself and say, I'm on the internet, but yeah, every other message should wait. Every other notification should wait. Every other trending news can wait. So that's what studying hard involves. But what would actually show that you're studying hard? It's not just to sit in one place for three hours looking at some random codes. No, no. It's to learn programming. Yeah, Deborah, I can see Netflix and IG. Thank God I don't even have Instagram time. Netflix too. I don't have Netflix time. But only the small TikTok, just small TikTok and Facebook or that I have their time. I yeah, you will not understand. I spent <laughs> I've stayed travel the night before. I, I wanted to sleep early. So I just decided to check out something online and that thing took me to one, two o'clock. So, we are in this table. <laughs> Back to what we are saying, learn programming. So, how do you learn programming? First, what is programming? Programming is all about solving problems. Programming is not code and code is not programming. Programming is different and... Programming is much more difficult than coding so programming is you solving a problem for example i have a problem when i ask people to impute their scores they normally impute things i don't understand you ask somebody to impute a score you know like so that you can see if it passed probation period and the person is imputing b wave now, that's a problem. How do you solve it? That's programming. So programming is an act. That's what you are going to learn. How do you learn it? Don't just watch videos that explain everything. Or start explaining codes to you up and down. No. Watch videos that explain the act of programming. It's quite difficult here, yeah, I know. But that's really the only way to learn. So channels that focus is more on explaining why something is done like this. How you can solve questions that are like this. That's what you should focus on on YouTube. Not some kind of channel that just explains code or those ones that we know won't be saying anything they'll just be typing out the code for you please avoid them 
So that's how to learn programming. Next thing you want to do is to attempt tasks. Don't just be comfortable with you've learned and learned and learned and you feel just okay. Come back to your ALX project and attempt the tax. Attempt it. I did not say get 100% in your tax. I said attempt it. So the other day I was going through the group and I saw someone say, um, what was that funny to say? Yeah, she said, I spent all my time watching videos and I thought I understood all the concept and then at zero, I could not understand anything. <laughs> we are all in this boat together. But the only way to succeed is to attempt it. I've talked so much about pseudocode, about breaking your problems down. What you saw in tag zero was probably what you've been watching since with twisted. So once the question is twisted, has a twist, takes a turn from the regular, you'll see that people who learn coding will just disappear. But people who focus on the act of problem solving or start writing pseudocode or start breaking down the problem line by line word for word identifying keywords then make a meaning out of it attempts the tax you saw that two checkers worked six field congratulations two has worked so out of 100 percent two that's 20 percent gotten go back what's the next step they say it's compile error compile error so what could make this code not to compile you start from there that is attempting the tax so try as much as possible to do that but one thing you should always do is the last thing here in the do rest well please rest well rest is very important all humans adults should at least be minimum of six hours of sleep a day it's not healthy but if we are going to manage anything because we know say or more life hard you have to do a lot of things at least take six hours of sleep that is if you sleep by 12 o'clock you should wake up by six but if you're on the table where you sleep by one and you wake up by 4 30 that's too dangerous to the health if you see all the effects lack of sleep has on the body if the effect starts manifesting you know in this part of africa now village people up and down there's no village people anywhere else. somebody will just be walking and fall down you say hey that was i quarry with his neighbor last week my dear you no know, quarry with anybody the neighbor does not have his time Sometimes not nah, sleep because of so in as much as you want to be great software engineers, please take your rest serious. You should do that. I've seen it helps me a lot. Yesterday I was solving a problem and I got lost. This was around to 10. I just decided to sleep. This morning I did not watch any video, I did not do anything. Immediately I came back to the problem. I was able to write a clean pseudo code of that problem and from there I started solving it. So what's the difference between yesterday and today? Your brain wanted to rest because it has taken a whole lot of information I learned that yesterday. And then I wanted to solve the question that yesterday, yesterday. So it didn't just add up. So once again, rest well. What are the things we've said we should do? Study hard learn the act of problem solving not just code don't be so concerned about looking for videos that explains the code no 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 no. look for video that explains the act of problem solving go ahead and attempt your task after learning to your satisfaction for that day attempt tag zero break it down into smaller parts 
and it's not just about ALX. Any tax, you could take tax online. You can start at them. Them you could take quiz online. Break them into smaller parts and start getting your thought process right. You're training yourself to become a problem solver, someone that will be very valuable in the future. Then we've also said you should rest in the world. Now, what should you not do? What are the don'ts? Number one, do not copy codes. I know I'm on this page where I've, I've told you before that to meet up, see my GitHub, go and compare. But now I'm saying do not copy. If you look at my code word for word and you type it out, you're copying. If you control C and control V, you're copying. But if you want to be a great software engineer, do not copy codes. So, how do you, how would you do your tax life if you're not copying codes? Because I know that if you're writing the codes, you have several errors, compilation error, this error, that error. So, somebody is thinking, it's easy for you now because you've been doing this thing for a long time. Then you just say, oh, we should not copy. Oh, boy, it's not easy like that though. But if you want to progress, copying does not help you. So, attempt the tax. You could ask pro questions. For example, in my special intense learning class, someone yesterday wanted to do a two-dimensional array and he just posed the problem and said someone should do it and that someone was not me i replied immediately asking the person to use a for loop a nested for loop that's how i should reply as as someone who wants you to be a software engineer it's not as if doing it would be difficult for me but once again, you'll be copying codes. Now, you know what you want to do, a 2D array, and you've seen that someone said use a nested for loops. So go and research on how to use a nested for loop to print out a two-dimensional array. Based on your research, check your code, check what you're doing wrong, and fix it. That's how to learn. Don't copy codes. The next thing you should not do is to rely on tutorial. There's something called tutorial purgatory, and that is when you follow a video and you think you understand step by step, step by step, step by step. You're just following the video now, like those videos I used to do. And then once I stop in tax five, tax six, you can't do it again. That's that is a disadvantage of relying on tutorials, they are all good. But they don't teach you the act of problem solving because it's a problem because it's difficult if it's easy then it's not a problem you know so just have that in your mind when you have a problem it means it's difficult and if you have some kind of tutorials that you are relying on you're not forcing your brain to think what you're just doing at best is to read the solution and you can't solve new problems from always reading past solution. At some point, you would have to force yourself to think. So start that forcing now. Now, does it mean that you should start getting everything? No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that. But now, let me show you one of the big disadvantages of relying on tutorials. I'm going to show you a question and if you feel you can attempt this question or you know what to do just indicate it's on the screen now and the problem says write a program that asks the user for a score if the user imputes a negative value or his score is higher than 170 reprompts the user so enter a valid score. So I got this um, 
problem here from you know this um one month probation something so the software takes in your average score right and there's nobody that would get 200 percent as his average score i think the highest you can get is 168 i'll be 169 I'm not even sure there's something like 180 there or 170. So if the score is higher than 170, our program should ask the user to enter a valid score. Or reprompt the user to enter the score. If the score is lower than zero, no matter how bad a person is in this program, the score cannot be lower than zero. So if the, if the user is imputing a negative value, the program should ask the user to impute his score. Can you attempt this? If you think you can, use the in-call message to let me know. Don't worry, you won't be attempting it. But how about you go and on your own try to do it? So you can screenshot this program now, this simple program here and go ahead on your own to fix it okay i have someone here who is bringing a suggestion is that prisca so let me see my call message now and she said we could set a range in the scanf close to the conversion character okay we could set a range great so a range of let's say 0 to 170 in the scanf okay tambari says i can attempt it now what would you use to attempt it we can also use um to reprompt the user using else statement okay so priscilla is going to use an if else statement to reprompt the user great let's see Tambar is also going to use if else statement. Fine. If you think there's something else you can use, tell me in the call message. Now, just to be clear, we've learned about the concept to do this before. We've learned about it. In one of my videos, I did. I explained it. If you've forgotten about how to do this at all, it's simply because you relied on tutorial and probably copy codes. If you did that project that talked about this, something like this, you will not forget how to do it. So that's why copy, relying on tutorials and copying codes could be really, really harmful. Create a variable for user and score hmm use if statements because you have maximum and minimum mark great thank you for all your answers your code will be really long using any of this pattern they could work but really long and in, in the next three years when you're reading your code you'll be like what you know Create a variable for user and score. Yeah, I would always do that. I mean, what would you use to tell the user to 
enter a reimputed score if the user is actually um, imputing a score that's not valid as it were. So, as we continue to think about this, this is the act of problem solving. You know, now when you face this kind of situation, imagine if this um, was a tax in ALX and you had 10, you had five minutes to solve it. And it's already the second minute. You have no idea what to do. The next thing is to have a negative attitude towards the whole programming language. I'm also in this boat. I'm guilty of this sometimes. I just get tired. On my status, I'm going to share something, something I recorded on TikTok. Something I posted on TikTok when I started learning C at the first time, so that you see that I also had a negative attitude towards C. So I'm going to post it on my status after now. But if you want to grow as a software engineer, you must not have a negative attitude. Anything that's required to learn, learn it. If it's C that's required to learn, learn it. Now you have a problem here, you don't know how to solve it, and it seems like every other person is attempting it. Like, look, just look at the message now. A lot of inputs here on how to do it. And then, it seems like I'm the only one that has no idea. The next thing is to say, I beg, I don't leave this sea for now. But no, don't. Problem solving involves that you would be lost. For everybody who answered here, I'm not so interested in whether they would get it or not. But the fact that they were willing to try is great. At the end of the day, all we need are three or maximum four lines of code. If you decide to indent your code so well, you need four lines of code or else you need three lines of code to implement this and then when you see it you may just be like ah is it is it only stone that's in this head safe if they ask me the name of footballer now nah, i will know if they ask me when pk said he's retiring now nah, i will know but now look at this simple three line of code i don't know why is it so difficult if you want to grow as a software engineer remove those negativity have it at the back of your mind that this is difficult but if i continue to learn i would grow then lastly don't give up in trying to learn the moment you fail is the moment you give up the moment you say i am not doing it again that's the moment you fail until then you've not really failed so once again study hard learn the act of problem solving which is programming if you want to know more about problem solving and coding check my post on on facebook attempt the tax rest well what you should not do you should not copy codes from others you should not rely on tutorials try to think force yourself don't have a negative attitude even if it's not working and lastly don't give up these are things that have worked for me over the time fine priscilla i like your solution well done so i'll come back to this later but now let's talk about some frequently asked questions I get and one of them is does this program get easy with time no is the answer ALX does not get easy with time as ALX forces you to do hard things I was discussing with a course 5 guy yesterday and he told me he's tired 
you're in quartz pain so imagine quartz five they're almost done with their program they're in the spring three and will soon be done but he said he's tired you know what the program is difficult so just have it in the back of your mind this program is difficult the next time you have a difficult tax tell yourself this program is difficult i know it's what we expect from the alex in fact the day alex would give a simple tax all the first in our course would be like she no be set up me and the alex they whine us <laughs> so this program is difficult but the people where they do them no be too hard they get so go ahead and continue learning the next important frequently asked questions i get is is it important to learn c if i want to be a front-end developer and what i always ask anybody who asks me this question is are you trying to skip c because it's difficult or because you think it's not necessary most times the real answer to that is the person is trying to dodge c programming language because the person feels c is too difficult not because he feels c is not necessary i've heard things like when we get to python it will be easier this c is too difficult i want to say that that's not true python will not be easier if you don't know c all programming language have the same logic it means that this question that i asked this challenge that's showing on your screen now that asks a user to impute score the same logic i'm going to use for c is the same logic i'll use for python the only thing that changes is the syntax so if you don't know c logic python is not going to be easy then is it important to learn C if you want to be a game developer, front-end developer? You are not here to learn game development or front-end development or back-end development. No, that's not what you're here to learn. You're here to learn a Silicon Valley based software engineering course software engineering the whole process related to how the computers and how software operates is what you're learning so don't be careful not to actually deceive yourself with the saying that the uh, c is not important for what i want to do what you're doing here is software engineering so go ahead take this c seriously it was a mistake I made. I didn't take C seriously at first. Forget all these ones I'm doing now. But I don't want you to make it. Take C seriously. It's going to help you a lot. Then, the next question I get is, can I rely on only ALX to know the different programming languages? The answer is no. If you depend on only ALX, you're going to finish this program without knowing any language. The thing is, ALX do not teach you a programming language. ALX teach you how to solve problems. That's why they give you tasks that are so difficult and so confusing. The task plays mind games with you. Yeah, I know all of that. That's because ALX do not teach you programming. They teach you problem solving. They don't teach you coding, rather. They teach you programming which is problem solving so how do you learn coding you go to youtube you read books that's c for dummies if you're the book type or you come to youtube and search c for beginners so you watch my video those videos explain c now from those explanation of c you move to ALS tags to know the programming languages so don't get it wrong alx do not teach you coding they don't teach you programming languages 
they teach you how to solve problems so if you want to learn code and the rest you have to learn from other source then come back to ALX to learn how to solve problems I'm sure that was clear if you have any questions based on what we've said now please ask me using the call message based on what we've said now if you have any questions there please ask me so after now I'll be giving you something something that has helped me if I cannot get the link online it means I would have to upload it to my Google Drive and share the link with you in the message where I talked about this meeting I did tell you that I'll be giving you a Harvard course for C programming there are two videos I've already seen one of the links online but I don't know if the second one is only accessible to their students so if I cannot get it online I'm going to upload it myself and send it to you by the end of that video you should be able to understand how the simplest way to solve these tasks you are going to see how easy it is and how you can use at most four lines of code that is if you like to spend too much time using lines of code or just three lines of code would help you write this thing clearly that video is going to explain it that video explains things then if you are interested after watching that video ask me to give you the assignments that came from the video the assignment is only available for harvard students and um, cs50 students precisely so if you are interested after watching that video ask me to go ahead to give you the video the the assignments but the video i'm going to look for it after now and send you the link if i don't get the link online if the link is not accessible online i'm going to go ahead and upload the video myself to google drive and then send it to you that video should help you with c and if you need more videos i'm always available to give you on c there's a video on pointers and nodes even the cs50 student all of us are complaining like this pointers you want to keep this in. so it's difficult but those videos coupled with the ones you're already watching it's going to help you so good luck to you best wishes however you put it as you continue to learn C I did say I'll talk about how to do this right um, you can use something called a do while loop so rather than using an if statement I'll use a loop so do you have you ever thought about the fact that a loop could help you react somebody for something if what you're looking for you don't get it the first time i saw it i was like wow so this is true wow so it's not only if statements that can check for conditions a loop can also do that someone did talk about using a range and then i was like okay okay how do you use a for loop to get the range and then the person said use an if statement i was like okay so you see this problem is very tricky if the user imputes a negative value so someone is thinking if value negative then do this right it would work but you waste more time writing different lines of code now you can use a loop that's problem solving that cs50 video is going to explain it better i'm going to just send you one on c there are a lot of videos 
So I'm going to try to get the 110C and send it to you. So before we talk about the next thing, now let me answer some questions. Ola say, I know said you attended all betting school. How do you rate all betting as compared to ALX? All betting and ALX are the same. All betting is ALX. All betting is the school. So ALX uses their curriculum. And all betting has already been acquired by ALX. So ALX owns all betting. So they are the same thing. The full all betting curriculum and even more. Is what ALX brings to you. So ALX combines the all betting four year course and gives it to you in one year. I hope that was clear. Does CS50 helps with C? Yes, CS50 is an introduction to computer science. And computer science cannot be complete without C. You see, C, a very powerful language. That's why it's difficult. So, yes, CS50 helps with C. You can enroll on CS50 through um, EDX. Yes, through EDX. I think there was a time when you could enroll directly, but I don't. It's like it's only through EDX you can enroll on CS50 through now. So if you wish, you could go on to enroll with it. Meanwhile, CS50 is also very difficult. So, if you feel like combining two hard things, you can join. Ola Bowali, it's expensive. If you want to get CS50 verified certificates, then you, they, they charge some amount. However, taking the course itself, it's at no cost to you, just as Fumi explained. Next question, what process do you use to get most out of the videos you watch? Just as I explained, I look for videos that do not help me to rely on tutorials. I look for videos that want me to think. And for every example you give in your video, I'm going to give myself three more. If I don't understand those three more, is that I leave your video completely, or I'm going to go to the internet and try to understand them. That is my own three examples I gave myself, or the additional three examples I gave myself. That's how I do it. I don't, a one hour video could take me three days. So that I give myself more questions. If you teach me for five minutes, I'm going to elaborate that five minutes, break down every single word you said, and try to turn it to 15 minutes. If it's not working, I'll leave that video and go to the next. It's quite expensive to do because it means that I have to stream plenty of videos to know the one I want to download. But I think it's just the price we get to pay if we want to be good it means you spend all your life on videos look at what i said you should do don't rely on tutorials so videos yes tutorials tutorials that give me copy and paste or you start writing plenty codes i don't have time for those ones I prefer white body. Show me your thought process. Yes, I spend all my life on videos. I'm a YouTube tech person, so I do videos. So why won't I spend my time watching other people's videos too? I notice they are loophole and then when I'm doing mine, I try to correct it. Where do you want to spend all your life? You could spend all your life on TikTok. It's still video share. So at the end of the day, everything boils down to video. B, are you going to brush us through the static library tax for today? Static library? What do they call that? I've not heard that name before. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I've answered all the questions here. 
Be with I don't understand what they mean by creating an MC function with the right prototype in static library tax. So what don't you understand? Is it the creating? Or is it that you should create a function? And this function, you should give it a prototype. And the prototype, you could get the general meaning of the prototype from the question. But the prototype was probably not given. Why don't you understand the question? Or you don't understand how to create the function. Or you don't understand what prototype to put. Those are questions you should ask yourself as you try to answer. So ask yourself those questions so that you know where you're not clear. Then you can ask me specific questions. Would you recommend any C programming lessons on Udemy? I've never used Udemy for C before. I've not checked out any of Udemy's C courses. So I cannot recommend, but I can for Python. Not necessary now though, but for C, no. Probably I'll recommend CS50, but CS50 itself is difficult. Probably better than ALX, but still difficult. Forces you to think. So, remember one time when I said, um, you have to study hard. You don't have to quit and the rest of that. There's something Julian Babia said. By now, everybody should know who this person is. He's Albertin co-founder. He said, like everything in life, the recipe for success is always the same. Number one, start. Number two, don't quit. You've started, number one. So number two, I charge everybody here not to quit. In the next one year, I see all of you as colleagues. Now I won't see you as colleagues. And that's why I don't do direct explanation. See this question um, Mr. Yusuf asked me. I asked him the question back. You know, from now on, I'm going to try to explain things to you as if you were already software engineers. I see us like working in the same environment. And then you are like, guy, this thing is not clear. So I will not take your code and start doing it because I have mine. I'll just say, you can use this or this now and move on. Because you've started already and I believe you won't quit. So very soon, everything that's not making sense now will start to make small sense. So Mr. Yusuf, that question I asked you, do and reply so that I can help you before I get out of here. So this is Julian. He said, start, don't quit. And you'll succeed. It's going to be tough because it means that you'll struggle, you will fail, you would focus, it's, it's just tough. You already know how it is. In fact, Julian went on to say this. He said, you will always have a valid and solid excuse to stop, especially when you fail. These excuses are real. So imagine someone who is a father, a worker, a husband and still doing a leg 70 hour per week program he has plenty of valid excuses to stop you will always have them it's so easy to stop very easy especially if you're like me that two three days of not sleeping I get sick you know the excuses to stop just even gets much more easier there was a time I was sick for about two weeks and I had to miss two weeks of this program and recovering back what I've missed plus the new task because ALX are not going to wait for you it was difficult 
like I had a solid reason to quit. But in your mind, create something where you have a zero option to stop. Like you can't you can't stop. You've already done two months. You can't from now you can't stop no matter what happens. So at the end of the day, you will say that you will slow down now. Realistically, you will slow down. You will be behind. You would ask a lot of questions and the rest. But you are not going to fail. If you get it in your mind not to ever stop. Sometimes... Julian says he looks back at his old code and it's not really perfect. I'm also in this show. I look back at a lot of my old code and I'm like, <laughs> what was this one writing? That my own code. I was like, what is this human being writing here? <laughs> you would you would always do this. Now this is a big reason why you should stop copying codes. Imagine you copy my code. And then in three years time you're saying when i look back at my old code it's not really perfect which code <laughs> realistically there's no code that you're looking at now you understand so start doing your own start trying from the first thing you should do is create a thought process in my cs50 facts everything i do before i start answering the task is to create a pseudocode.txt file where I write my pseudocode normally and from that pseudocode I start answering the tax questions I start working for looking for the formulas so in the same way to start writing your own code that's the only way to improve if you copy first understand later copy first understand later you'll be cheating yourself in essence so as much as possible you can stop copying codes if you forked my github repository i would advise you to rename the one you fought from me and go back to that your original one and try to continue with your original one if not anyone i pass from the one you fought anyone i pass you'll just be having good 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 and that could be really dangerous to you it would affect your learning your thought process it would affect it and it's not going to get simple when we start python it's not going to get simple if somebody tells you that person is just trying to make you feel happy it's not going to get simple so force yourself now to understand the thought process and if it means that you should remove my forked repo please do that to help yourself all right but if you think that's not necessary i can still be writing my own codes and learning then fine go ahead and do the best for yourself at the end of the day we find ourselves like julian the co-founder of all betting he said he struggled a lot when he started learning c his scores were far worse than 80 percent you know most of us are are very very well conversant with this statement we find ourselves struggling a whole lot our programs always have faults they always have compile problems and the rest that's part of the learning process it's normal when your problem have too much faults leave it and do something else then come back to it and don't try repeating the same thing again and again you know just look at your error and try doing something different then if you want to ask for questions i've always said it ask me specific questions this 
parts line through your my code has problem where do you think the problem is i've not seen anybody ask me that kind of question before where the person specifies the line so he knows where his problem specifically is coming from but he doesn't know how to solve it once i'm free i used to reply that one but you see my tax one has problems those kind of questions i used to run from them if i just see my tax one has problems i'll just run straight because i don't even know your tax one and then if you send me screenshots except i'm using whatsapp web i won't really see it that means this night now after this class if you send me screenshot i won't see it because my phone memory is filled so as your problems are having faults it's normal but try as much as possible to understand the faults then from there we can help and struggling when you are learning is part of the process that one should not that one should be like a normal thing for you in fact the day you write code by yourself and all we click green at once that's the day you should start fearing yourself because at that point you have learned enough to hack cbn <laughs> so once again just continue yeah it really takes time it's frustrating like every other thing in life do no good thing comes easy then don't forget you are not alone you have friends that will be helping you at alex there will always be someone to help it's up to you to know how to motivate and move that person to help you some people after asking questions like two times will be like she ain't nobody here wants to answer me and if i see something like that i'll just go to i'll just not answer the person again because most of the times when i answer questions like now i have a program that is 70 percent done and the rest 30 is not done i have another program that is 80 percent done and the next 20 is not done and i have the next one that is optional like those advanced tax zero percent done imagine me coming now on to whatsapp and I say a funny meme and I reply it. And somebody's like, oh, so B Wave has even seen my question. Then he asks, um, Sharon, I don't want to help me. Imagine me saying that. I'll be like, yeah, I don't want to help you. Why should I help you? Why on earth should I help you when you're a software engineer? So, in as much as people are here to help you, know how to move people to help you. And sometimes, you should not expect people to always help especially if the question looks too easy sometimes i don't help then if the question is too difficult that i'll have to spend 45 minutes explaining how to understand type zero sometimes this will go tired <laughs> so i spent half a day on tax one and i was like who sent me work i said at this point you, you really started software engineering <laughs> in the real life though that is in four five years from now you could spend two weeks fixing one small issue you could spend one month fixing that same small issue it doesn't get better even if you leave air legs so Who send you work? Now, software engineering, you know, this career is difficult. But we keep going and we know we will always succeed. At the end of the day, there is no substitute for hard work. There is one group I am. Anytime I post about do hard things, someone will reply me, do smart things. The way is deceiving himself. <laughs> because there is no substitute for hard work there is nothing like work smart don't work hard 
it's a lie a lot of people use that in a mistaken way there's no smart work without hard work to turn that hard work into a smart work is this hard work itself so in software engineering if you are not working hard it means someone is working hard for you for example if you want to get 200 percent of your tax and you fork someone's repo and you just click on the checker click all click all click all that's smart work oh. great until someone asks you to define a function that takes in two parameters one as an integer and the other one unknown from the user and immediately the person is telling you define a function you are like god a big oh. hey father lord that's what happens when someone decides to work smart does not want to work hard so if you are in the category of people working hard you spend hours you're going to stay up to 11 even though me i don't recommend staying more than 11 a week if you have other things to do please leave se and a legs focus on those things and rest but if you're in the category where you work hard every day just to learn and you see someone trying to demotivate you telling you how he knows one software engineer in germany that did not does not know c at all and that he's making seventeen thousand usd a month and that c is a very useless language and that alx he will soon leave them because he has not seen any alx graduates getting up to 15,000 USD a month and he knows one software engineer in one place just stop listening to him you know just stop because there is no substitute for hard work whether you do the hard work in ALX or you do the hard work in CS50 or you do the hard work in OTGL or what are they called there is hard work so never stop believing in yourself never stop taxing yourself to do hard things but please look kept and look very fine be a fine guy ah, no, 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 no. you should not allow your career make you look unkept it's those 1950 programmers that look unkept though. you don't want to try more than Lagos guys <laughs> so just keep working hard success is not final if I know C now, it's not final. If I also fail in my tax, tax one, tax two, tax three, I fail everywhere. It's it's not so bad. What matters is my continuity. So what I'm saying in essence is that if I give a six months break from learning, and Mr. Ogene Maro Great continues to learn for the next six months. If I start learning code back, Mr. Ogene Maro will most likely know more in code than me. I've known a whole lot than the people I and them started together two years ago. Plenty of the people I will I used to ask questions on simple HTML that time. One was asking me this evening one question like that about code. I was just smiling. I was like, <laughs> this was the guy I used to ask questions. So the continuity is what counts. Just continue learning. Remember how I talked about how far you've come already. There was a reason why I talked about it how shell used to look like one big thing how git used to call git jits there was a reason why i talked about it and the reason is because since you have continued they now look easy that's what will happen if you continue to learn so you will never stop learning apart from the fact that i got ill and 
I got offers and I had to start preparing for interview and I still have a course in CSPP that I want to finish as soon as possible and I have another course somewhere else. Apart from those facts, one big reason why I stopped doing ALS tax is because learning does not end. I cannot be doing the tax from now till next year November. Great business, right? But it doesn't feel right and even to ALX, it wouldn't feel right. So, and even to you, you don't want to be watching videos on every tax from now to next year for like for this 12 months program. You don't want to do that now. So, start learning. Prepare to do hard things, guys. The one month probation did something for you. The more months probation allowed you the freedom to explore. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, said sources start coming when you have the freedom to feel. So that one month probation pretty much took away the consequences of feeling from you. And now you have the freedom to feel. It means for everything you think can work, try it. Like this tax, this um, this one, this program I did now. That I said write a program that asks the user for a score. For everything you think we work, try it. So if you use an if else and it's working, ask yourself. This is my code that is looking seven, eight lines. Is there no way to shorten it? If you think of a way, try it. Don't just be okay at, you know, relaxing. Continue to try and try and try and try. That's the only way you succeed. You'll be so surprised how these things will stick into you and you'll know it at the end of the day. Sometimes I ask myself how I'm able to speak English. Like, how? If I was to say good morning now, I don't actually have to think and put a thought process like if I want to read this thing, write a program that has a user for a score. I don't think now. I just go ahead and read it. That's the same thing that will happen to you if in the next three, four years you continue to learn at this pace you have set for yourself. Or if you can increase your pace, increase it. But make sure you rest though. So if increasing your pace will make sure you're not resting, please rest. But if you continue with this pace and try to get 1% better each day, in the next 3 or 4 years, you'll look back at the programmer you've been and you'll be very, very proud of what you have already. So from here on, you can go ahead and do really, really great things you can go ahead to do hard things and learn programming learn problem solving so now you have everything you need to go ahead from the very best you can be assured that the path you are taking now is the path you need to continue taking. The path where you literally cry, you get angry, you transfer the aggression to some other people that it doesn't concern. That's the, that's the way forward. It's great to have all of you here. So once again, as I said, if you have questions, you can always ask me and if i'm free i would always answer depending on how you put your questions though and depending on how genuine they are i am always very excited when someone asks me a question about a c program that is not in alx i see that person as a very great learner you know and then when someone is able to pinpoint specific line four and five, I'm having a problem there. Is there any way I can reduce this line of code? 
is there any way I can make it better? I I so much love this kind of question. Question that makes me think. Not tax one is not working. If tax one is not working, I have just one answer. Check my GitHub and compare. But when I see questions that make me think, I'm very, very, very happy. So you can continue asking me questions. But this formal setting of Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, classes, 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 officially, it's over. During this one month, what I focus more on is thought process, thought process, thought process. There was one day I joined one Google Meet and I was just very quiet there. So it's not me that was hosting, so I was just very quiet. And someone said, according to the B Wave way, your thought process should be. And I started laughing. <laughs> I was like, thought process is not the B Wave way. But, anyways, if you call thought process my way, I will be very happy to identify with it. It's better than according to copying and pasting man. So yeah, I focused a lot on thought process and with thought process you can go anywhere. You don't have to understand the tags before you start thinking and before you start doing your thought process. In fact, the thought process helps you to understand what they say you should do. So do it i have a question here my job is not giving me time to study please what can i do should i quit my job hmm a very tough question if you quit your job can you be able to provide the things you will need to study for the next two to three years for example you will need light power supply you will need internet constant one you will need i use personally i use around 80 to 100 gig monthly so i don't know how much you need but i'm not sure you are going to need two gig <laughs> so it's going to be high so you need light you need constant internet now if you quit your job would you be able to get these two things so you would also need to you know how cost of living is you also need to live if you quit your job would you be able to afford these things think about all the bills you are paying now would you be able to pay them for the next two three years if you quit your job if no please don't quit don't quit though someone was saying i want to learn tech i want to learn tech then i told the person learning anything in tech is expensive the person was like tell me something cheap i can learn in tech i said i can't think of anyone e everything is expensive if you don't have the resources for it don't start the person was like i said yeah i'm not here to give you some kind of fake motivation like me i can't use phone to program I used to use phone to do video editing at one point but program I can't like literally cannot some people can but me I cannot and so if I'm advising you I would say if you can please use a system now to get a system that can help you program is expensive so tech is expensive and tech doesn't pay immediately no matter how you work very hard, the average time you should give yourself to learn your first well-paying job is around two, three years of working 50 hours per week in, in tech learning. You should give yourself two to three years to get a well-paying job in tech, in software engineering, clearly not tech, in software engineering. So if you quit your job, would you be able to get these things if no don't quit if it's not giving you time to study at all what you could do is try to be looking for 
a new job why still doing this your job look for a new job that will give you some kind of small time and any little time you have like this time that you've used today to join this meeting great once you get that little time please focus on your learning and we all pray that we should get the good life we came to look for in tech we came to look for in software engineering because the passion here is to be able to do things that will create value for others and that will give us money so if you have something giving you money i will not advise you to quit it so for tech no especially when you're still learning a tech skill once you've known a tech skill once you've known a tech skill to a high degree then you can quit so basically that's it basically that's it for today and for our last class i had a great time doing this with you and i can only be grateful i only have great words connecting with all of you let's go and have some fun on other social media platforms if you have platforms where you have jokes comedies please tag me there especially on facebook please i like play a lot so send me a friend request or if you are following me send me a message so that i can send you the friend request instead on facebook then follow connect with me on linkedin and follow me on twitter i'll follow you back immediately let's go and have fun on social media and let's also talk tech on my social media accounts i talk a whole lot about tech and i'm going to be explaining more and more things giving daily tips up and down every weekday on my social media accounts so yes please connect with me there once again never stop believing never stop fighting never give up just continue all you have to do is be one percent better than your previous self every day and in one year time you'll be surprised how far you've come Thank you so much guys. Are there questions you would like to ask me? Please. Congratulations to each and every